Hey, 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 everybody, how's it going? It's me, your boy, Waddles, and welcome to List Week Day 1. So, List Week is a week of the year where I post a bunch of list-style videos just like this one alongside the brand new Let's Play series, which, hey, you should check out. Episode 1 dropped yesterday. So, I just started a brand new Minecraft world. That means I've been thinking about early game Minecraft quite a bit. Today, we're going to focus on early game, then talk about five must-have early game farms for beginners. All of these farms are meant to be pretty easy to build, and they will help you out a lot early on. Now, these farms are meant for beginners, but I have included some tips in here that maybe you don't know, even if you played the game for a little bit of time. What's the first farm that you build in a Minecraft world? Let me know down below, and while you're down there, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't yet. The first thing that you have to worry about in a Minecraft world is honestly food. You need food to really do anything. If you got really lucky and you spawned near a taiga biome, you probably found some of these things. These are sweet berry bushes. Sweet berries are, in my opinion, one of, or if not the best, early game food in Minecraft. They fill a decent amount of hunger and they grow really fast. That makes them really good. But there is a downside when it comes to these things. The downside? Well, that's this. The, the bushes. They hurt you and they make you move slow. Experiencing this every time you're trying to harvest food because you accidentally move too far over that is really really annoying the first farm in today's video is a way to get right around that thing now this thing is really really easy to build and it makes harvesting berries i guess in a way a lot more fun <laughs> i guess as fun as that could be so to build this farm you'll need sweet berries you'll need some slabs and then you'll need some fences but actually maybe you don't need fences if you don't care about how things look skip the fences and go for solid blocks if you don't have solid blocks for some reason skip the solid blocks too and just use sweet berries and slabs you could also use trap doors and many other blocks to make the thing look really really fancy now i'm absolutely sure you guys don't need a tutorial on this it's really easy to build but just to be safe i'll show you guys so We'll start by planting a line of sweet berries the line can be anywhere it can be as short or as long as you want on either end of that line place fence posts now on top of everything place a bunch of slabs and then wait for the berries to grow up once they grow up you can walk right against the slabs and hold down the use button to harvest all of your sweet berries you won't take any damage doing this and that means you can harvest your berries a whole lot faster now, if you're really into berries, you can make these things look pretty nice and make a gigantic berry farm using this method. But long story short, if I have sweet berries, I definitely have something like this built above them because otherwise, sweet berry bushes are just a pain. To take a look at our next farm, which actually is a little bit harder to build, we'll need to slide over into the nether. This thing right here is a super simple early game zombie pigment farm. Because of the zombie pigments AI, they are really, really easy to farm. All you need to do is aggravate one of them, and then all of the other ones come running right to you. That means essentially the only thing you need to farm these things is a safe box, and that is what this thing is. We'll start by building this farm, and then I'll do a demo at the end of this segment. Now, to build the zombie pigment farm, you will need 12 walls and 9 slabs. I definitely recommend using cobblestone or something that can't be blown up by gas. You'll also need probably at least four ladders. You could use maybe a little bit more, and then you'll want a single trap door. You will also probably want to have a lot of extra slabs on hand so you can block spawns inside of something that we're going to build underneath this farm. But that part, that's technically optional. Now, with this build, location is everything. To get the best rates out of the zombie pigment farm, you want to build the farm in a flat, open area. This farm is built in, honestly, the perfect location. I got really lucky with this nether. If your nether isn't this flat or open, that's okay. It doesn't need to be, but you just need somewhere that is at least a little flat and a little open. Once you've found where you want to build your farm, go to about the middle of it and place a trap door. Then open the trap door. Now you'll want to dig down a couple blocks. I recommend going down like four blocks and then placing ladders so you can go down. Go down into this room and carefully dig it out. You want to make a room below your farm where you can kind of go to for safety if things start to go wrong. 
This room can be as big or small as you'd like, it doesn't matter. But, I do recommend placing slabs on the floor so zombie pigment don't spawn inside of it. Once you aggro a single zombie pigment, a bunch of them will become angry, and if they spawn down here, well, you won't have anywhere safe. So, consider placing a slab floor. I highly recommend. After you set up your room, go back up to the surface, to the top of this thing, and close your trapdoor, then stand on it. Now all around the trapdoor, you want to place wall blocks so you have something that looks like this. On each corner, place another wall so you have your corners built up. Now jump up and place a slab on top of each corner wall that goes up to start setting up your roof. After you've got all the corners done, fill everything else in so you have something that looks exactly like this. Boom. That's it. Now we need a way out of this farm, so there's a few options here. If you're insanely crazy and brave, uh, replace a wall with a fence gate and just exit this farm like this when you're done, but that's highly dangerous. A smarter idea would be making a long hallway that goes off to somewhere, again putting slabs on the floor, then putting a ladder at the end of it and it goes up to the surface, then another trap door on top of the ladder, and then you can exit your farm that way, but hey, definitely make that hallway a little bit longer than I made here. Now, if you are really dedicated, the safest way to access this farm is a nether portal. If you make a hallway down a ways and then place a nether portal and link it up to somewhere in the overworld, that would be the safest way to get out of this farm. Uh, how I have it set up down here, zombie pigment will not be spawning. I will be safe until I exit this farm out here and I just wouldn't ever do that. So if you're up for it, do it this way. This is definitely the safest way to do things. Using this thing is really easy, but I definitely recommend that you have some armor, probably at least iron too, because zombie pigmen are strong. So go into the nether with a bow, some arrows, a sword, and that armor. Go over to your farm, climb into the top of it, then close the trap door and stand right on the middle. And the middle is important. Make sure you're right on the center. Then, go ahead and take your bow and shoot one of the zombie pigmen. All of the zombie pigmen in the general area are going to get mad. If you're right in the middle though, they won't be able to hit you. They'll just surround you like this and yeah, not really a problem at all. Then you can go ahead and use your sword and pick these guys off from safety. Now the experience will go right over to you, it'll find its way. But the drops, eh, that is unfortunately not really the case. If you want the drops from this farm, you'll, you'll have to make your way out of it eventually once the coast is clear to pick those things up. Now zombie pigmen also drop quite a bit of experience which makes this farm really nice early on. Maybe you're just getting into enchanting and you need the levels, well this is definitely the way to go, like 100%. There's like no effort required for this thing and the level output, it's pretty good. Now the one thing is that uh, this is built in the nether and that means ghasts will be spawning, like, like that guy right there, and they can shoot you and, and mess things up if you don't build this out of cobblestone or something that can't be blown up. If there is a gas nearby, use your bow to get rid of it, or just go into your safety chamber and maybe wait for it to despawn. That could take a while, but that's an option. If anything ever goes wrong, like with the zombie pigment or anything, use your trap door to get away. If you're standing right on the middle and you open it up, you will start to drop down. So easy getaway. And that is just about the easiest zombie pigment farm that you can make. And the second farm on our list today. So next up, take a look at this crop farm. What do you think? I, I mean, I know it's not much, it's simple. It's just a wheat farm. Now, uh, take a look at this crop farm. It's a little more organized, a little fancier, and it's not only wheat, right? Well, what if I told you that I planted both of these farms at pretty much the same time? Would you believe me? Well, I hope you would, because that is exactly what I did. So, I planted these farms at about the same time, but one of these farms, this one over here, is clearly a lot closer to being ready to be harvested. What's the deal here? Well, I'm using a few game tricks to actually make this crop farm a lot more efficient than this one is over here. So obviously early game, you need to set up a food farm. That's seriously really, really obvious. Now, if you weren't lucky and you didn't end up spawning by sweet berries, you're probably going to have to go with something else. Wheat is, is okay, potatoes are even better. If you can find at least two crops in your world early on, this is going to be the farm for you. And I have a feeling that this is where maybe some of you guys who have played for longer might learn something actually. 
So our standard early game Minecraft crop farm requires three things. It requires a hoe, it requires some water, and then it requires some seeds. This crop farm requires a little bit more. To get this crop farm up and running properly, you'll need two different types of crops, a hoe, and then again some water. You might also want to have some shears, some extra dirt blocks, a campfire, a beehive, and then some flowers. But these things down here, these are technically optional. You only really need the things on the top of the chest. Now, where do you build this farm? Well, of course, you build it near water. It could be a river, it could be a lake, it could be an ocean, it could be in the middle of, of the land if you have an iron bucket. But assuming you don't, find a body of water and then make a straight edge on it. So something like this. If you have sand, replace that sand with dirt because you can't plant anything on sand. Now, after that, take a hoe and start tilling the land. Turn all of the land within four blocks of the shore into plantable farmland. All right, so now we have this, and that means it's time to plant our crops. Now, Minecraft crops actually grow faster when they are planted in alternating rows. Now, why? I wouldn't be able to tell you, but it's just how it works. So if you plant your crops in rows, like I'm doing here, and switch between two different ones, it doesn't have to be wheat and potatoes. It could be like potatoes and carrots, or wheat and maybe, I don't know, beetroot for some reason, if you want beetroot. But uh, so long as you have alternating rows, your crop growth will be sped up. But that's not the only thing that we can do to speed up crop growth. If you're into making your crops grow really, really fast, get your hands on a beehive because it's 1.15 after all. Place some beehives on the water side of your crop farm and then find some flowers and place them on the land side of your farm and then bring some bees over to this thing. Now, I've got, I think, two bees over here. They must be inside of their house right now. And I actually found them over there in the plains biome. I led them over here with some flowers. So you could do something like that or you could use leads or you could even just silk touch a bee nest. It doesn't really matter, but bring bees over to this thing and let them do their thing. So long as you have enough beehives and enough flowers, the bees will actually actually stay near this thing. You don't need to build any walls around it at all. When the pollinated bees fly over your crops, they will actually speed the crop growth up quite a bit. And that's definitely something that you should take advantage of if your crops are growing really, really slow. Now to finish everything off, add a campfire by your farm and then use it to cook up your potatoes for some really, really good early game food. Just remember that you need to wait for the food to cook at the campfire. Don't walk away or you might lose it, it'll drop on the ground and that'll be bad. Set up a farm like this in your world and in no time you are going to be thriving because this, this is going to be really good, especially if you're going with baked potatoes early on. Baked potatoes are a great early game food. They're even better than sweet berries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you know me, you saw this coming. Early game must have number four today is gotta be a mob crusher farm. Now, today we're going to talk about mob crushers that are for cows, sheep, or for pigs. It doesn't matter, any of those three mobs, but this is something that you need in your world. If you've never built one of these, you're really missing out. You should seriously just open up to the idea of this thing and build it. Now, these things are really cheap to build. To build a single crusher, you'll need a water bucket, a fence, a chest, a hopper, a staircase, and then seven building blocks. But you might want to have a little bit more than seven so you can make the thing look good and so you have some temporary blocks to build with. Now, to get the thing up and running, you'll need either some sheep, some pigs, or some cows, and then food to breed those mobs. So if you're doing pigs, you need carrots. If you're doing cows or sheep, you'll need wheat. Again, extra building blocks. We'll start off with a demo. This is a cow crusher farm. To use the thing, go up to it with some wheat and use the wheat in a semi-circular motion like this going around the fence post, and your cows will be bred. Now, Minecraft has a rule that's known as entity cramming. Entity cramming means that only so many mobs can be on one block at a single time. If there are more mobs than the game allows, then the game will automatically get rid of some of the mobs. Now, Minecraft is nice, and it chooses to kill the adults first, so the drops from the adults go into the chest down below. The babies live inside of this thing to grow up and then be bred again next time. <laughs> it's all kind of evil. Now entity crammers are really, really easy to build. Start by digging two blocks down into the ground. Place a chest in the front block and then place a hopper in the back one going into that chest. Make sure it goes into the chest, that is very important. Then place a temporary block next to your chest and place an upside down staircase, could be any type of staircase, right above that chest. Now jump on the staircase, place some building blocks right back here, not stairs, building blocks. Then jump up one more time and place more building blocks so you have something that looks like this. 
Then place your water bucket in the bottom of this thing, bottom block, and then place a block so you can get up and down. Now you need to go into the wild and find some mobs to get into this thing. I think for this one we'll go with sheep since there seems to be a bunch of sheep near here. So you, you're coming with me. I definitely recommend starting with one mob, like just do one at a time because if you bring two, it'll get kind of difficult. This is the most difficult step, it's kind of annoying. So we've got our mob up here, now we need to push this guy into the middle. It'll fit, trust me, uh, but it can take some time. I got really lucky there. Uh, bad example. <laughs> so do it once, then do it a second time. You want at least two mobs inside of the thing to get it started. If you have more sheep in the area, y you could put more in it, but uh, you really only need two. While you're pushing your mob into the center, definitely keep the food in hand so the mob stays locked onto you. If you take it out of your hand, it might stop caring and walk away, and that'll be kind of frustrating. Once you get two mobs inside of the thing, place a temporary block on one of these sides, and then place a fence block right above the center. It can be a little tricky to do, but definitely doable. That's it. That's the whole crusher farm. That's all you need to do. Go over to your super efficient crop farm, then come back with all of the food that you need to breed your mobs and breed them. Now, it'll take a while to get started, but once you have enough mobs inside of this thing, every time you breed the mobs, loot will be put into the bottom. If you go with cows, you'll get beef and leather. If you go with sheep, you'll get wool and mutton. If you decide to go with pigs, well, you'll just get raw pork chops, so probably don't use pigs. From my personal experience, it seems to take about 22 to 24 wheat to breed this thing when full, so just keep that amount in mind. But there you go, that is farm number four today. So early game, usually you are trying to avoid all hostile mobs because they're just bad, they're, they're not good. But maybe you're at a point in your world where you don't really want to avoid them anymore, but you're just not ready for the nighttime for some reason or whatever. Maybe you need some bones from the skeletons, maybe you need some string from the spiders. If that is the case, this is the farm for you. This thing is pretty much the easiest hostile mob farm in Minecraft. Now to build this thing, you will need two whole materials. You'll need a bunch of slabs and you'll probably also want to have some building blocks. Then you'll need to find somewhere that is flat and open in your world. You could build this on the surface like I did here, or if you're really smart, you could go all the way down to diamond level and clear out a room down there and not even need any slabs. You could just make a giant room. But digging out all of that space, that'll definitely take a lot more time. So figure out wherever you want to build this thing, then think about what mobs you'd like to farm from this thing. If you'd like to find endermen inside of your farm, your ceiling will need to be three blocks up off the ground. If you don't want any endermen, then do your ceiling two blocks up off the ground like this. If you hate spiders and you don't want to see any of those boys inside of the thing, then you'll need to place slabs on the ground in a pattern like this. They're spaced out every two blocks. This will block all spider spawns, but allow for all other mob spawns like creepers, skeletons, and zombies. So figure out what kind of mob you want to farm and then basically start building a giant platform in the sky, either three blocks up or two blocks up. Now, I don't have any particular dimensions that you'll want, but this one right here is 56 blocks long and 34 blocks deep. It's, it's pretty big. Now, you don't need to build it that big, but if you build this farm too small, it will stay bright underneath it, and that means no mobs will spawn. I mean, take a look at this corner over here. It's really bright, and no mobs are spawning at all. That's a problem. Mobs will only spawn towards the center of this thing, unless you decide to put a little more effort in and put a wall on this farm, which is something that I kind of just recommend doing. So take a look at this back corner. This one is really dark. Again, that corner over there where we just were, that's super bright. No mobs are spawning there. A bunch of mobs are spawning here. This side is clearly working better, and it's not because of the height, it's because of the walls. So if you can afford it, put some walls on the thing. If not, just make your platform really, really big. You'll know the thing is big and dark enough once you start seeing mobs spawning inside of it. Now mobs won't spawn while you're right by it, so you'll probably need to build it, then walk away a little bit, and then come back and see if anything has spawned underneath it. Once it's big enough, you'll get something that kind of looks like this. I have lit up zero caves under the surface too, so 
The rates, eh, not too bad. Now to use this thing, in survival mode, run over to it with probably some armor on and a sword. Now it's up to you, if you're really brave you can fight the mobs under there, if you're like me then you can lure the mobs out into the daylight, let them burn up a little bit and then land the final hit on them. But uh, just be really careful, the zombies all have like this whole group mentality thing and it's kind of annoying, kind of dangerous so e yeah just, just be careful, this thing is kind of dangerous. If you're not skilled, I definitely don't recommend fighting creepers under this thing because if you let them blow up, the ground is no longer flat and the ceiling will probably have a hole in it that you'll have to fix. So you might be better off just luring creepers out into the sunlight. But if you need a hostile mob farm and you don't have too much or you just don't want to put much effort into it, this is the way to go. And would you look at that, with that, that is our whole list today. Those are five must-have early game farms. You build these things in your world and then you'll be off to a really good start. I hope you guys enjoyed this list video. If you did, let me know by dropping a like and subscribing if you haven't yet. There should be a brand new Minecraft guide episode out tomorrow, so keep your eyes out for that. And of course, keep your eyes out for more lists later this week. Thank you very much for watching. I'd like to send a big shout out to my patron Skelly Wampus today. Thank you for your support, Skelly, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Until next time, stay cool. Goodbye, everyone.